Well, finally, the president is set to meet with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and other congressional leaders today. The topic, of course, the looming debt default. The Treasury Secretary warning the nation could be unable to pay its bills by June 1st. They have to negotiate on Capitol Hill at this point. They have to find a solution. Republicans did their job and put a deal on the table led by spending cuts. The White House wants the debt ceiling raised without any conditions. No cuts, nothing. And it's accusing Republicans of manufacturing a crisis. Here's Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas. The idea that you're going to always increase the debt ceiling with no spending reforms or any other measures included, um, that is ahistorical. In fact, it's kind of saying that we shouldn't have a debt ceiling, because if every time the debt ceiling is coming up, you just say, we're going to lift it, what Joe Biden is going to have to do is sit down with Speaker McCarthy, ultimately, and reach a responsible solution that increases the debt ceiling, but also addresses our runaway spending. A new op-ed argues, no, the Constitution does not let Biden spend at will compromise on the debt ceiling already. In focus now, Senator Ron Johnson, Republican of Wisconsin, member of the Homeland Security Budget and Finance Committees. Great to have you in focus. First of all, what needs to happen at this meeting with the president of the United States? Well, what should happen, uh, as you mentioned, the House has passed a more than reasonable package of spending restraint, uh, the RAINS Act, uh, pro-growth elements, uh, and also increase the debt ceiling so you can avert, a, 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 let's face it, a, a fake crisis. Uh, we have more than enough revenue coming in. There's no way with the responsible Treasury Secretary, responsible President, we would ever default on our debt payments. Uh, so th this is a phony crisis, but mm -hmm. that's what happens here in Washington, D.C. But they should just pass the House bill. Uh, this would be over. We can move on and we can actually start responsibly passing appropriation bills, restore some function to Congress. But again, this place is so unbelievably dysfunctional, and the mainstream media is, you know, continuing to prop up the, the Biden administration. They're talking about this thing turning into a crisis when it doesn't have to be so. I see what you're saying. So the crisis is quite real if the president and doesn't get his act together and, and do what he has to do. And how can they say they're going to veto something from the White House when I'm not even convinced everybody's read it? Well, first of all, it had to be passed by the Senate, taken up by Chuck Schumer. He should take up their bill. Again, understand how reasonable this is. We, we, conservatives in the Senate were work, working with conservatives in the House. Uh, we were urging them to come up with, uh, again, things we could attach to the debt ceiling so we could increase the debt ceiling but institute some fiscal controls. Sure. Uh, we, we wanted to go a lot further. But House conservatives were very reasonable in working with other House Republicans in passing what they passed. So we made more than enough concessions. What I would have liked to have done is return to a baseline based on pre-pandemic levels. We spent right. $4.4 .4 trillion prior to the pandemic recession, 4.4. .4. During the recession, well over $6 trillion. We returned in this bill to a baseline of 2022 of $6.2 trillion. Again, it's, it's, it's better than what Biden wants to do but a long way from where we need to go. But again, I completely support what the House did. That's mm -hmm. why I'm saying what should mm -hmm. happen here is the Senate should well, pass the House bill and the President should sign it, and we'd be done with this. Well, and I, look, it's quite convincing when you see Democrats also putting some pressure on this president. I mean, they can see this president actually taking us right up to the brink, and they don't want that to happen. They don't want that, as you call it, a manufactured crisis to become a real one. But then you've got the president who's already said he's not going to negotiate. And that's why I wonder if he's even read it. Because everybody has something that they would say when someone puts a bill on the table. Even that 14, you know, page outline that AOC put on for green energy. Everybody had something to say about it. This is a lot longer than that, of course. All right, let's move forward. The president once again insisting his son has done nothing wrong ahead of possible federal criminal charges for Hunter Biden. Constitutional scholar Jonathan Turley responded with an op-ed, quote, Joe Biden says Hunter has done nothing wrong. Really? Let's count the ways. He lays out a host of evidence pointing to criminal acts. He argues the tax and gun charges federal prosecutors have been investigating are only the beginning. House Oversight Chairman James Comer says he and his colleagues plan to drop a bombshell some evidence against Hunter and the Biden family tomorrow. Let's watch. It's going to be judgment day tomorrow for the White House. We're going to present the American people with the facts, the facts about what the Biden family has been doing. We're going to present bank records tomorrow 
Uh, we're going to also uh, talk about the different uh, people that they were taking money from, uh, their ties to foreign nationals in some of the worst countries uh, on the planet. And I think the American people are going to have a lot of questions for Joe Biden. The U.S. attorney investigating that tax and gun case is expected at any point now to announce whether he will file charges. Senator Johnson, I'm hearing it from both sides of the aisle. If you've got something, start subpoenaing people, Democrats especially because the president's approval rating is so low. And how can they run him if they can't, if they can't move forward? So what's your thought on just go ahead and, and bring forth what you have and subpoena people? Well, first of all, Senator Grassley and I, in our September 2020 report, laid out as much evidence as anybody would need to lay out that the Biden family is corrupt, that the, uh, President Biden would be highly compromised. But again, the corrupt media ignored it. They censored it. And uh, we elected President Biden. So here we are. Uh, one thing that we don't talk enough about, uh, I know President Biden is just so proud of his son, but let's, you know, we have the evidence that Hunter Biden paid for, paid tens of thousands of dollars for prostitutes that were sex trafficked through an international sex trafficking ring. Oh. I mean, I mean, yes, ick. And President Biden, during about a four or five month period, offered to pay for about $100,000 of, of Hunter Biden's bills when he was spending tens of thousands of dollars on these women who are sex trafficked. Now, if, if that is at, at a minimum morally reprehensible and wrong, and the president's defending that, and the media isn't even looking well, into it. Well, wouldn't that be a felony? I mean, if you're I doing business with a sex trafficking ring, that, that's more than ethically offensive. It, it is grotesque, but the media doesn't concentrate on it. We had that in our report. We, we had the, the business, the, the financial transactions proving it. James Comer does the same thing. But again, it's, it, it is so icky. It's so reprehensible. It is. People don't want to talk about it, but it's just galling to hear the president talk mm -hmm. about how proud he is of Hunter. And he, he, he enables this. He enables it by propping up his son, both in, in terms of those types of words as well as financially. It's, it's really pretty sick. You know the irony, too, in what you've just shared? So the president's son, uh, just in the last few days, wanted to fight his child support because the family doesn't want to recognize that child as legitimate. The irony would be is what if that child, I mean, you said prostitutes paid for by Hunter Biden, that going through a traffic, a sex trafficking ring, I mean, so how does the family not know about that if they're denying a baby that potentially came from that very source? I mean, I know we don't know what we don't know, but that was quite the bombshell you just dropped. And you're right, people aren't reading deep enough, and when, when they do, they don't report it. We will, too. We will mm -hmm. definitely do that. It is ick factor 10, as you put it, very icky, but those are the facts. Well, it just proves, again, how morally bankrupt the Biden family is and President Biden. I've got grandchildren, and regardless of how they were conceived, if, if it was proven that I had a grandchild, I would do everything I, I could to have a relationship with that grandchild and make sure that they were taken care of. President Biden just wants to completely ignore the existence of a grandchild. That is morally bankrupt. Senator Johnson from the great state of Wisconsin, thank you for being here today in Focus. Have a good morning. You too. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.